right, I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown of just really basic stuff using Mesh. Um, it's great for sort of auto-populating stuff, uh, like this barbed wire, that's a new tutorial. Um, but I really like Mesh, and it's super powerful for a lot of stuff. Every once in a while, I'll sort of randomly crash a computer, um, but when it doesn't do that, it's extremely powerful. Um, so I have this little barbed wire thing here, but I'm actually not really gonna use this at all, so I'm just gonna kind of uh, delete that. Um, and I guess I don't need my sky dome light either because I'm not rendering anything. Good lord, what am I doing? Um, all right, all right. Um, so first thing, I'm just gonna make some cones, uh, and I'm just gonna go through and like show you the basics of how Mash works. Um, so we have our little goofy cone here, and what you're gonna want to do is go into this Mash tab here, and the very leftmost icon is gonna be Create Mash Network, and you just want to click it. Uh, and by default, actually this is not the default behavior, which is interesting. Um, so it's gonna do a few things. Um, one, it's gonna take your original cone, and it's just gonna hide that in your outliner. Uh, and it's gonna make this new, what's called mash repro mesh, um, which is basically, hey, here's the object that mash is creating for you. Um, we also have this little mash node down here, uh, and that's just saying, this is the mash network that currently exists. Uh, so the next thing I usually do is open up this mash editor here. It's basically like an outliner for mash where it's kind of the same setup. It'll show you all your mash networks and all of the uh, nodes or things that you have affecting them. So if we go ahead and we click on this little mash distribute, this is created by default anytime you make a mash network. Um, normally this is set to 10. Uh, I'm actually interested that it was set to two. Um, but basically this is, like I said, the default behavior when you start mash. It's just gonna be like, cool, here's a line of 10 objects. Um, and there's a few different things that you can do in here. Um, so you can mess with the distance a little bit. This is just like the distance on, on the X axis down here. Um, you can also mess with the distance Y. So it's a quick way to sort of populate different objects if you just need like a quick specific diagonal line. Um, you can also go in and add rotation to these. And this is one reason I use cones for this. Um, but you can see it does a nice sort of uniform twist to your objects uh, along whatever axis you are rotating on. Um, you can also add different scales if you so need um, and different offsets. Uh, the offset in this case is basically just sort of translating it an additional unit uh, along whatever, whatever it's translating on. Um, so honestly, I usually don't play with this too much. I just sort of, blah, my cat. I just sort of set everything to zero. Ow, dude. Um, and then where mash becomes really powerful, ow, would you get off me? <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so where mash becomes really powerful is the ability to sort of modify these values. Um, so if you also look in the distribute node, there's different types of distribution. So you can do linear, you can do radial, and I'm actually gonna go through and, okay, cool, it's adjusted itself. Uh, so radial is great if you need to make a really quick spiky studded bracelet. Um, honestly, I don't use this too much, but it exists. Um, you can set things up in a spherical fashion, which is gonna be a little more obvious if I add some more objects, but you can see it's basically populating them along an invisible sphere. Um, and you can also you know, modify the settings of this if you want a larger sphere, etc. cetera. Um, there's also grid if you just want you know, a nice layout of little stud things. Um, and there's some other different stuff. So like you could lay this out along paint effects if you had paint effects. Um, I feel like that's gonna maybe break my computer. So you'd have to, you'd have to input a paint effect stroke in here. Um, and then you can just sort of lay them out uh, sort of randomly within a volume. And I do not need a hundred, uh, 100 nodes, that is excessive. Um, what I most use it for is distributing it along a mesh. Um, so I'm just going to go in and be like, do, 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 what kind of mesh do I want? Um, so I've actually used this to populate sna uh, snake scales, which was kind of fun. I'll show you that as like a weird bonus thing at the end of the video. Um, so we're going to go back into our mesh distribute, be like, great, distribute this along a mesh, grab our P cube, and then dump that into a, uh, dump that into input mesh. And for some reason, this one, I think likes it. It's always a little bit finicky to actually get this in for me for some reason. I don't know why. Um, it's like actually kind of the bane of my existence. 
OK, so I'm going to try duplicating my cube, question mark. There we go. I don't know why that's a thing. Sometimes it just like doesn't let me drag the object on. It's very annoying. Um, but either way, go into your distribute node. And what you can do, um, this is usually where you want to kind of like mess with some of the settings. So we have scatter. Um, if you set this to vertex, it's basically going to snap a cone to each vertex, which is actually would be in this case a convenient way to make a companion cube. Um, you can do random vertex is going to be a little bit more obvious if I have uh, less. We just lost power. Shoot. All right, got to do this quick. Um, random vertex is going to be, shoot, my fish tank's turned off. Um, sort of literally just pick random vertices. We have power again. I think there's construction happening outside. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, you can do face center. That's going to snap it to the face center. And you'll notice that it's uh, the little cubes are sort of clipping through the object. Um, power keeps going on and off. This is a little bit concerning. Um, this is based on the original P cube. Um, so wherever the pivot is basically in that is where the objects are going to be uh, stuck into the object. So in this case, we've already sort of wherever the pivot is set when you make the mesh network is kind of where it is. So if we want to modify it in this case, I usually just cheat and kind of move the faces out and then you'll get uh, sort of flatter, flatter cones. I'm going to leave this like this for now. Um, power seems to be off now. Who knows? Um, there's also other options. You can do like random face center. Um, you could lay these out along the edges, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so for now, I'm going to do, uh, I'll just do face center. And there's other options. So if you have like a lot of points, you don't want to figure out exactly how many faces your mesh has. You can do flood mesh. Uh, and basically for every single face, that will just sort of fill in one of these little cones. Um, that only works, like it doesn't work for scatter. Um, it works for things with like specific points uh, or like a specific number of things like vertices. There's a specific number of vertices. So it'll work for vertices. It'll work for face center, that kind of thing. Um, so you can also do calculate rotation. If you, this is turned on by default. If you turn it off, it's going to leave everything in the default orientation of your uh, little cone. So if you turn on calculate rotation, basically what that's going to do is sort of attach things based on the normals of your object um, and ignore ramps. I honestly don't, what the heck, super know what this does. Um, I've never really looked into it. I've never really needed it for anything. Um, there's also some other stuff you can do. You can enable scaling if you want to, um, which is something that I also usually don't mess with too much. But like sometimes if you need to bulk adjust your objects, it makes sense. Um, it also worked really nicely on these snake scales. Uh, and there's just sort of like other stuff like in here, there's random seeds, but we're not using random. So it doesn't really make a difference there. Um, so there's also a bunch of other really powerful stuff you can do with this. Um, if we go into the mash network itself, there's different options for orient and a bunch of other stuff. Mostly what I'm going to worry about is, and the curve I go over in the barbed wire video. Um, but the other thing I want to look at is the random node. Um, so if you just click that and do add random, uh, you have a bunch of different options. And by default, it starts, you can kind of see it a little bit. Um, you have options for the position, rotation, and scale. And it defaults to moving everything one unit along every axis, uh, whether or not you want that. Um, so, I mean, maybe you do want that. And in this case, you know, like you can shift stuff, you know, sort of randomly along the X. Uh, or along the Y, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can also rotate these randomly, um, give a little bit of randomness to that, uh, or you can mess with the scale. Um, so depending on what you're using is like, you know, gonna affect how you use this. This is really convenient for creating some uh, random rotation if you're populating like trees or something like that. Um, and that's actually a lot of times why I use this is just like, I need a bunch of grass in my scene, mash, assist me. Um, and just go through and mess with these. Um, if you click this uniform scale button, it's going to basically, if you set this to like, you know, 2.5 scaling, it's going to do that for all of them instead of just the x axis. Um, so you can do that. 
Uh, you can also go through and mess with the strength of the randomness. So with this is set to one, it's basically going to be completely random um, or like, you know, completely affecting the, the scale or whatever values you're messing with in your object. Um, you can also set the random strength and honestly, these behave ever so slightly differently. I'm not entirely sure uh, what the difference between these is, but um, you can just sort of, you know, mess with the sliders, see what they do for you. Um, and then you can mess with step strength and that's going to sort of do, I guess, a little bit, like you can see it's sort of like affecting which objects are scaled when. Um, and that I sort of take as like the seed value in this case um, for the random node. Uh, and there's some other settings in here, but I, again, usually don't super worry about those very much. Um, so let's show you, I guess, some, some more practical versions of like why you might want this. Um, so if you're populating something like trees, let's just go ahead and really quickly make a terrible looking ground plane with some hills, with a hill. <laughs> uh, and I will just make a very awkward little cylinder and this little cylinder is going to be my tree. And I do find it really helpful um, to go ahead and just line up your control, or I'm sorry, line up your pivot with sort of the bottom of your tree or whatever object that you're using. And then you want to go through, uh, just like we did before, and do mash, uh, create a mash network. It's going to make, for some reason, mine's defaulting to two. I don't know why. Um, go into that distribute node and say maybe let's do like 20 trees. Cool. Um, and we're going to set this distribution type again to mesh. Uh, it's going to once again ask for a mesh and you just want to throw it that little p-plane that you've made. And you can see that now we have some very poorly populated trees. Um, so there's a few settings in here uh, that we want to, to look at. And for some reason, Lord knows why, it's decided to put all of my objects in the ground plane itself. Um, there is somewhere that you can... Ah, yes, you can do push along normal. You should be able to do push along normal. Um, and theoretically, that would sort of like shift it outwards. But for some reason, that is also not working right now. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just sort of cheat again. Um, and this is not a pretty solution for things. And I'm just going to be like, boop, cool. Now my trees are kind of less insane. Um, ah, there's my ground. Nope. Where's my... There we go. Um... So in this case for trees, there's a few different settings that you want because um, this looks pretty darn awful. Um, oh, the other cool thing about mash, sorry, before I forget, is uh, if you make a change to this object, it's going to make a change for all of them. So in this case, I'm just going to add like some crappy branches uh, just to sort of make a point of one of the, the functionalities of mash. Now it just looks like we have a crap ton of flags. Um, we can see if you modify this, it's going to modify all of these with those changes, which is really, really convenient. Um, but anywho, so go into your distribute node. And in this case, it doesn't make sense to have trees growing, you know, sideways. Trees pretty much grow straight for the most part. So I'm going to turn off this calculate rotation and now we have straight trees. Um, you will also notice that that sort of changed the direction of the trees. Um, I'm not sure how MASH decides on this rotation for objects sometimes. Um, but when we turn that off, the trees go from being pointed sort of diagonally to just in the same direction as the original tree. Um, so in this case, we can't do flood mesh because we're just doing scatter and that makes sense for trees. Um, if you wanted really ordered trees, you could set this to like face center and then do, uh, then do flood mesh. And now you have like this weird perfect grid of trees, um, which looks crazy. So I'm going back to scatter. Um, so in this case, this is why I added the branch. It looks pretty stupid. All the trees are oriented in exactly the same position. So we're gonna go back in once more and add a random node. Um, and then just turn off, if you want to, you could randomize the position. Um, for trees, it's probably not gonna hurt anything unless you, you know, do something like that where they then start floating. Um, but you wanna go through and probably in this case, mess with rotation. Uh, and do rotation on the y-axis. And now we have some randomization within our trees. Um, if you wanted to, you could also make some of them, you know, leaning slightly for a little bit of like interesting, like I think that actually does look a little bit more natural. Um, so you can do that. Um, 
And then if you want to, you can mess in the distribute node with the seed um, to give you sort of different uh, default tree layouts. Like in this case, I think maybe this is sort of kind of more appealingly clustered. Um, and of course you can add more or less trees as you see fit. Uh, the other thing you can do in the random node is go in and mess with the scale and just turn on uniform scale and oh my god, that's ginormous. Um, but this is going to give you a little bit of variation in the size of your tree and just make things feel a little bit more random. Um, so that is trees in MASH. Um, my computer is does not hold a charge like at all. Um, so I'm going to go in, oh the other thing you can do, uh, you can turn off the settings for like the distribute or the random to see exactly how your MASH stuff is affecting or like how a particular node is affecting your network. Um, so really quick, hopefully before my stupid computer dies, <laughs> I'll show you guys how to make a terrible snake. Um, and for this, I'm just going to go in and I have a video about doing poke faces, but that is basically what I'm going to do for this. And I will, I'm going to add a little bit of taper of this just so I can show you guys like one weird thing of mash. All right. So imagine that this thing is like a weird snake body here. I'm just going to go in and I'm not going to walk you through this because again, I have another video on it, um, but I'm going to go and just uh, create a, and this is something that I actually did for a client job. Um, good Lord, create, I can't talk and type apparently right now, uh, sets, quick select set, edges. Uh, and then I'm going to go in and do edit mesh, poke, and then I'm going to grab select, good Lord. Um, I'm like panicking trying to get this done before my computer dies and that's clearly not working out for me. All right, so we have this and it's like a weird snake body and the, I want, I did the poke face so I get these like nice sort of uh, tapered scales. And I'm just gonna go in really quick and this usually is like pretty, pretty computationally intense with my computer so hopefully it doesn't explode. Um, but I'm just gonna sort of shape this like a really crappy looking scale um, and be like great ugly scales cool so we have this extremely hideous looking scale um, and like I said I have I have literally done this for freelance jobs and it was like I was very excited how easy this was so uh, we're gonna go back into the mash tab make a new mash network and now we should have the scale sort of duplicated. I'm gonna really quickly assign this a, just like a blin, um, cause I, I do find having it be slightly shiny helps. So go into your distribute node, set this to mesh and grab the cylinder and dump it in your mesh. Um, and in this case, we set up the geometry in a specific way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into my method and do face center. Um, and I'm going to do flood mesh. Um, this is going to give me basically some kind of weird, you could use this for chain mail if you wanted to, probably. Um, so it's going to give me a very ordered set of scales that I'm just going to sort of grab this and do the thing where, oh no, my computer is dying, it's dying, um, where I rotate these and maybe scale this down a little bit because it's huge. Shoot. Um, this is not great. Um, and you can see the scales are going the wrong direction, but I don't care because I'm trying to make my computer not die. So we have scales and they're populated nicely. Um, if you give these a little rotation, um, you can see that now again, it'll just sort of make them stagger a little bit nicer. There's a few settings you can use in this to make them look nicer. Uh, so if we go into the distribute for this mesh, uh, what you want to do, so we did flood mesh. Um, we have smaller scales at the bottom, like imagine that's like the end of the tail. So turn on enable scaling. Oof. Uh, and that's going to basically scale these based on the size of the face it's attached to. Um, so if we turn this down slightly, um, you can see maybe, hopefully, um, that these scales are a tiny bit smaller than the ones at the very top of this. Um, so that is basically making scales with MASH. Um, I need to go because my computer is about to die. But yes, hopefully that was helpful.